This is Professor Lee Berger. I'm a research professor in human evolution and the public understanding of science at the University of Witwatersrand. And I'm an explorer in residence for National Geographic. Fantastic. Now, obviously, there's been a lot of focus now on uh, Homo naledi. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more why this is so significant? Homo naledi is significant on a lot of levels. Number one, it's a new species. It's something until last Thursday the world didn't know existed. So there are three things that are really interesting about Naledi. One, it's a new species. And seeing a new species in our genus tells us a lot about the sort of mode and tempo of the things that went on in the past that eventually would result in us. That's exciting. It's always exciting to see something new. Second part is, it's the richest early human relative discovery in the history of this continent. We're a field of scraps. Normally we find little bits and pieces. We found thousands of remains of Homo naledi in this deep underground chamber. But perhaps the most exciting thing about Homo naledi is that this small-brained, primitive human relative appeared to be deliberately disposing of its dead in this deep underground chamber. And until this moment, as of Thursday of last week, we perhaps thought that was not only unique to Homo sapiens, our species, but in fact perhaps identified us. You spoke about um, specifically ape-like features. I know this has been in the news for, uh, for the past few days and over the weekend as well. Uh, what is your reaction to the people who feel that uh, we've now, because of this discovery, been compared to, to apes? Well, actually, I think that uh, um, Vavi said, I'm not descended from a baboon. Well, I agree with Vavi. We're not descended from baboons. Um, baboons are relatives of ours, uh, but they're relatives in the sense that cats and dogs are relatives to each other. They're both carnivores. Baboons and humans are both primates, and we're really probably not any more closely related to each other than a cat is to a dog. We don't come from baboons. Homo naledi does not come from baboons. However, we are related in some way very closely to Homo naledi in a very different way. Um, we don't know, and we're not saying right now, whether the evidence is strong enough to say that we are descendant from Homo naledi. But it is a close relative that is less advanced than we are. What else are you expecting to find in uh, you know, later uh, excavations there, if, uh, if you're going down? Well, we've left thousands of remains of Naledi inside of that chamber. They're the only remains that are in that chamber. And uh, we're going to work with the rest of the scientific community and decide what we should do with those remains. Should we leave them there? Should we recover more? We know a great deal about Naledi. In fact, it may be one of the best known species now ever discovered, simply because we have so many parts. We'll be discussing that with our, our colleagues and other people around the world about what we should do. So there's more secrets to come out of that chamber. There are also more secrets to come out of everywhere else because we didn't stop exploring. We have teams of explorers in the field all the time right now and there are new discoveries being made. We just have to go through the good old scientific process of peer review and such as that, but watch this space. Obviously, Homo naledi is uh, in the limelight right now, but uh, what else are you really excited about to find? Well, I'm, I'm excited about finding the next new thing, because what Homo naledi tells us is that we need to explore more because there are new things out there, unexpected things to be discovered. And just to, to close off quickly, Professor, what do you think Homo naledi tells us about ourselves currently? I think it tells us that, that our evolution, that our being here on this world today was not a simple linear progression of from some lower form to some higher form, that there were many remarkable experiments, some of them very complex, maybe even equal in their complexity, to us that occurred in the past. That's exciting to think about.